tonight, the 911 call in the so-called swatting incident at Memorial High School has been released. Now, the call came in shortly after 8 o'clock Wednesday morning. The caller stated 10 people had been shot inside the school, but indicated it was in a room that officials say did not exist. Once police arrived, they swept the school twice and determined there was no active threat. The caller gave the name of James Edward, but abruptly hung up when the operator asked for his location. There is an active shooter inside the high school, at Memorial High School. One at time. Memorial High School, there's an active shooter? Yes, there's 10 students have been shot on the, on the second floor. Who's been shot on the second floor? 10 students have been shot on the second floor. And you're saying at Memorial one High School? Yes, it is, it is Memorial High School. Yes, one five zero. How do you know this? I was there. He was you were there? Yes. Memorial High School officials tell us today there was no decline in attendance following the incident. All school-related events for this evening and this weekend remain on schedule. Well, similar swatting calls were made yesterday in several other schools across the country. James Madison Middle School in Madisonville, Kentucky, also experienced an unsubstantiated threat. Federal investigators are working to determine if they are connected. In response to all these swatting calls around the country, the FBI has now created a task force to combat the dangerous prank. ABC's Aaron Katursky has details. In April, Oklahoma University received a series of calls about a shooting that evacuated the campus and drew scores of police running to the scene. Guns out. There's a man running around with an AR-15 here. Okay, where are you guys at exactly? We're hiding in the library. We're on the west side of the library. There never was a shooting. This was a hoax. The country is seeing a skyrocketing number of these types of calls called swatting. Bogus threats phoned into police about active shooters, bombs, or other acts of violence in progress. The FBI's Brian LeBlanc is teaching law enforcement officers the best way to react. For a long time, the FBI in particular didn't want to discuss these kinds of incidents. Why not? Because we're concerned of the, the copycat effect. So why are we talking now? Because it's reached that level of, of being at a crisis level. In May, these Massachusetts middle schoolers fled their campus to escape what they thought was an active shooter. Video shot that day showing some of the dangers. Children reportedly running along a busy highway, putting their lives in danger for a hoax. I got a call from a person. Said he was in the bathroom with a shotgun. Said he was going to kill everybody. Everybody safe in here? And in Texas last year, students on the ground as police swarmed this high school. That one, too, turned out to be fake. Is this thrill-seeking? Is this revenge on, on certain groups? In some cases, they're actually being paid to do this. Some cases, it's revenge, and that's really where swatting came from, was from the gaming community, where individuals were, were playing each other in the first-person shooter games, and they wanted to take out their opponent, so they would call in a swatting to their house so the police would come and, and then they could lose their game. To interrupt the video game? And absolutely. Statistics have shown the profile of a typical swatter is 12 to 17 and they're doing this to cause chaos. These are kids? Yes. The FBI says it now investigates thousands of these kinds of swatting calls every year, targeting schools, synagogues, black churches and hospitals and leading to an overwhelming police response. In 2018, Andrew Finch was killed by Wichita police after someone called in a phony report of a murder and hostage-taking at his address. The online gamer behind the swatting call was later sentenced to 20 years in prison. Since then, swatting has become so widespread, the FBI set up a specialized unit to help police departments inundated by these hoax calls make more informed assessments. These calls actually have characteristics that can be used to identify them as hoaxes pretty early on in the process. And based on that, you can have a measured response. We're not saying don't have any response. We're saying have a measured response. And after 20 years of being trained to drop everything and run toward active shooter calls, the FBI is now working to retrain officers to take an extra second and evaluate the call. Because when officers arrive with weapons drawn, there can be real danger and the risk of a mistake is high.